you know, I read the comment section a lot, right? A lot. <laughs> I read it a lot throughout the day. And some of y'all, including me, are very judgmental. I mean, extremely judgmental. And I mean, like, what can I say? You know, it is part of our culture, but I swear that some of us, including myself, could stand to be a little less judgmental. So today I found a list on, um, let me see, this was on YouTube. Um, and it's a list of ways to not be so judgmental. So I know it wasn't YouTube. This was Instagram. I found this on Instagram. And um, I'm going to tell you where I got it from. It was at Nija Tawab. And I'm going to tell you this list and talk to you about some of the ways we might be able to incorporate this to help us in life. Okay. So first, let me do the introduction. I'm Queen Osset Haru, and thank you for joining us for another wonderful edition of Ask an Aquarius. If you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and pass it on to anybody and everybody you know. Please <laughs> leave us a positive comment in the comment section. And if you would like to get a reading done or anything else, <laughs> any other Ask an Aquarius type uh, questions, or if you want to uh, meet me on social media, or if you want to become a patron on Patreon, please check out underneath this video. Okay. All right. So let's talk about this. I got nine ways from this lady. Uh, she's a sister and she has a website and she's very into helping people, you know, improve ourselves. So I thought it was a cool list and I'm going to read it to you. Nine ways to be less judgmental. Number one, accept this. People are not perfect. This is great for Aquarius because we kind of hard on people sometimes. And I think if you can remember that people are not perfect, they never will be and neither are you. <laughs> I don't care how great you are, you're not perfect. It, it can't happen. Uh, we have If we can accept that, then we might be a little less judgmental. And especially, remember, judgment isn't just others. We also judge ourselves harshly sometimes. So this can help you with yourself too. Number two, embrace this. People think differently than you. This is a hard one because sometimes people will say, well, if it was me, well, I wouldn't have done that. Well, I would have done this. And I have to remember mm, when I say it, because I say it too, I have to later remember people think differently. People are from different genders, different cultures. They've had different experiences, different socioeconomic groups, different sexualities. Different people have had different experiences that are going to shape the way that they do things. And just because they don't do things the way I do doesn't mean they're necessarily wrong. Maybe what I'm doing would be wrong for them and vice versa. So this one I think is really important. Number three, practice self-compassion for yourself. The more compassionate you are with yourself, and I've read this in different books, the more compassionate you are with yourself, the more compassionate you are with other people. The more critical you are with yourself, the more critical you may be with other people. It's not always like that, but oftentimes it does work out that way. So if you start to treat yourself with more compassion, more understanding, more love, then maybe you'll do that with other people. I know the more kind I was to myself, the more I realized everybody is fighting a hard battle and needs that too. Step outside of your comfort zone by being around people who are different from you. If you're around people who are different from you, people from different cultures, from different walks of life, different ethnicities, different whatever, just different, you know, I think it makes you less prejudiced. I do. I mean, I've been around people all over the world. I've been to Africa. I've been to Amsterdam. I've been to Colombia. I've been to Panama, Costa Rica. I've been all over the world all over the United States. And I think that it makes you less prejudiced to be around different people because it helps you to see that different people live in different ways, you know? And it also helps you to see that some of the things that you consider to be different really aren't that different at all. You know, um, the places that I've been who did things so different, I kind of got used to in a couple days. When I was in Africa, 
one of the things that I, I was in Ghana, I was in West Africa. And one of the things is that nothing starts on time. Now, in the African-American community, this happens sometimes too. A lot of lateness. A lot of events start late, okay? So I noticed that this happened in Ghana, you know? Now, in the United States, it, it annoyed me. It annoyed me when things were late in the United States. But when I was in Africa, I was like, all right, well, <laughs> I just kind of threw up my hands and I just kind of went with it. So I feel like if you talk to people who are different from you, step out your comfort zone, make some friends that don't look like you, make older friends, make younger friends, you know, talk to different types of people and you will find that your mind does open a lot. Stop making statements like if that were me and I would never. First of all, you never know what you could do. You ever watch horror movies and you'd be like, I wouldn't have fell. That dummy fell, you know. I wouldn't have did this. I would have grabbed that. You don't know what you would do. When we were kids, okay, me and my best friend, me and my best friend and her sister were in the living room. Um, well, the sister was upstairs. Or was my best friend upstairs? Who was upstairs? Okay, so my best friend was upstairs. The sister and me were in the dining room. And we were talking, looking in the mirror. We were teenagers, flittering with our hair and stuff like that. So her sister got under the dining room table. Now, mind you, I didn't know what she was doing. I just kept, you know, doing me. I, did, I looked over at her and kept doing me. So as I'm standing there doing my hair, my best friend comes down the steps, walks past the table. Her sister jumps from under the table and grabs her ankle. My best friend started to scream and fell to the floor. Now, this is a friend who always swore she would never fall in the horror movies. You know, whenever on, we would watch Jason movies. Uh, what was that called? Friday the 13th. Whole series of those old movies. And she was always like, look at this dummy falling. Da, 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 da. And she would always criticize the people in the horror movies. But when her sister grabbed her ankle, she started screaming and fell to the ground like somebody was killing her. I laughed so hard. To this day, I remember that. And I remember her screaming. And we clowned her because it was like, oh, but I thought you was big, bad, and tough. And you wasn't going to fall if Jason was chasing you. And first thing, she fell right on the ground. <laughs> hysterical i laughed at her for days so my point is is that you never know what you would do you might think you wouldn't do xyz if you were in that situation but you never really know okay until you're in a situation and you have you're stuck with whatever options you're stuck with you don't know you never know all right let's see the next one stop using yourself as an example for how others should behave I think this goes with the other ones too. It's basically just letting you know, just because you will or won't do something doesn't mean another person might not make a different decision. Remember this, you're not always right. That's a hard pill to swallow, <laughs> but it's true. We're all wrong sometimes. We all interpret things wrong sometimes or guess wrong sometimes or something, you know? And you might be right often. Like, I'm right pretty often, okay? But I always know <laughs> there's room for error. There's room for mistakes. There's, there's room, okay? There's plenty of room for it. I always recognize that. So I'm always willing to learn, you know? Because I know I'm not always right. I would like to be always right, but that is not the case for any of us. And the last one says, consider the whole person, not just the part of them you're judging. So you really do have to consider, like, what did they do? Why did they do it? What circumstances did they come from? You know what I'm saying? You got to consider all of those things. And, like, you know, sometimes their educational level, you know, did they even know any better? I mean, it's a lot of questions. And a lot of times when we're judging a person, we're not asking ourselves those hard questions. We're judging them based on our situation, our thought processes, our education level our socioeconomic class, we're judging them based on us. And it's not a fair lens to use. You have to look at things through another person's lens. So think about that, guys. When we're being judgmental, 
especially in the comment section. Some of y'all be going in in the comment section. Now, mind you, those are the comments I don't, you know, <laughs> those are the ones I don't approve. But my point is, is that some of the times I read them and I'm like, wow, you would really think this or say this to another person? Judgmental much, you know? So we all, including myself, because I can get like that too. I could be like, mm. and I'm quick. I'm quick to judge, you know? And I have to pull myself back like, wait a minute, think about this or think about that. And that's why my Libras are so important to me because my Libras always make me see things from a different perspective, you know? And that is helpful. Even though Libras are known for being judgmental, they always look at di the different perspectives. And that is really helpful to me. Now let's look at some positive comments. This one is from Molly. What's up, Molly? Molly said, yes, that's him, all right. I seen a comment that said, it takes a special kind of person to love an Aquarius. I agree. Patience is key. Uh, yeah, I agree with the patience and it does take a special kind of person because I've dated Aquarius and to be honest with you, I gave up on them. I gave up on all of them. I dated three Aquarius. One was a woman and two, one was a woman and two were guys. And I gave up on all three of them. I was just like, I don't know what's wrong with you, but <laughs> I ain't got time, you know? So you do have to be very patient with the Aquarius. I wonder if people think they had to be patient with me. They probably do. <laughs> they probably do. They probably like, Queen is a trip. I had to be real patient with her too. Tracy Meredith. Hello, Tracy. Tracy said, very true. That's why they call us cold. They always call Aquarius cold. We are very caring people who do not like seeing people hurt. We feel the hurt when we see people hurt. Whoo, especially if you're an empath. That's true. It's hard for us, so we try to be rational instead of emotional. Yeah, our own emotions are difficult for us, and being rational and logical is our default mechanism. And that's why people will say we're cold, we're unfeeling, they, we didn't show any emotion. I didn't show any emotion. That don't mean I didn't have any emotion. Because <laughs> there's things that have happened in my life, and I have been on fire, angry, sad, upset, something, and the other person never knew because I would not give them a satisfaction of knocking me off my square or because I knew if I got upset, I was going to jail, <laughs> okay? And I knew I needed to reel all that back if I wanted to stay free. So there's a number of different reasons why Aquarius show no emotion, but it's not because we don't have any. I always tell people Aquarius feel things deeper, as deep, or deeper. Because <laughs> remember, Aquarius is the water bearer. That means that we come with our own jug full of emotions, okay? We're the air sign. People always miss this up. They always think Aquarius is a water sign. Aquarius is an air sign. But we come with our own jug of water. And that jug of water sometimes is emotion a lot of it and we have it contained in that little jug if you ever see a picture of aquarius they always have this big ass jug full of water and sometimes it's spilling out and sometimes they're holding up the jug the aquarius has that water contained in that jug one way or another and we're either carefully spilling it out or we're keeping it in that jug and that jug is emotion so we have it we come with the emotion we just don't always show it Okay. All right, guys, it's time for us to get going. So you come back soon because I got a lot more to say. See you later.